This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. The 2020 African Nations Championship draw earlier this week marked a critical step in the preparations for the April tournament. Hosts Cameroon assured they will be ready to host the 16 finalists. Tonight's sports scene show looks at what is in store for the home base players competition as the final countdown to kickoff begins. Hello and welcome to the show that brings you all things African sport. I'm Mahia Mutua and this is Sports Scene here on CGTN. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's check out what else is on tonight's show. Uganda netball star Ruth Meme takes center stage in this month's Sportlight interview. And the Zamalek party rolls on following Egyptian Super Cup victory over bitter rivals Al Ahli. Welcome to the show. Now, the local organizing committee of the 2020 African Nations Championship has assured that Cameroon will be ready for the tournament before April. With barely a month and a half to kick off, there are concerns that the country could find itself in the crosshairs of the Confederation of African Football once again after being stripped of the rights to host the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations finals. CGTN's Sadiq Shaban reports from Cameroon. This was the first meeting of the African Football Fraternity after a tough year of relations between Cameroon and the Confederation of African Football. Having taken away this tournament's hosting rights from Ethiopia and handing it over to Cameroon last year, CAF finally admitted the confusion it created in the run-up to this competition. They've come a long way. Uh, there were uh, also some controversialists, but um, uh, I think uh, they're on the right way and uh, we will accompany them to, to also um, have uh, good implementation. This is very, very important, but that's, what we are, that's why we're also there for. Cameroon has had to renovate some existing structures and build new facilities for this tournament. CAF inspectors have been keeping a close eye on the progress to get the host nation's readiness and capacity to manage the expectations. We have come here quite uh, a couple of times, even before uh, the draw, we did an inspection visit as well. And uh, yeah, we will keep on uh, pushing for the details, which is very, very important. Uh, you know, we want to see good football on the pitch, but we also want to see good organization off the pitch. The local organizing committee has only a few more weeks to sort out pending issues and tie up on the last details of this competition. We are ready uh, for the sham. There's no, absolutely no problem. It's only four stadiums among the seven that we have. Among the seven, there's one who is going to be finished in the next couple of months. Uh, we'll be ready for, for the 2021 AFCON. Honestly, we have no worry at all. And as the finalists prepare to travel to Cameroon for the tournament, the government has assured teams, visitors and general public of their security and safety in the wake of continued unrest in parts of countries' southwest and northwest regions. It's an opportunity to all of us to know how the competition is going to take place and to the students and everyone to see how Cameroon is really organized and to how they're going to make it. We are ready and we are, we are hungry. We, we, are, we want to express something we missed on the last competition. So uh, we are ready and we expect to give the best. With the tournament fast approaching, African Football Fraternity will be hoping that the wheels of organization will move even faster and that there will be no more last-minute surprises from the Confederation of African Football. They could well be feeling the pressure of organizing and preparing to host two of Africa's biggest football competitions in a period of one year. But Cameroon insists they are ready to provide a world-class football experience, beginning with the 2020 African Nation Championship in April. Sadiq Shaban, CGTN in Douala, Cameroon. Well, in Tanzania, expectations among fans are mixed despite the country landing a favorable draw in Group D alongside Guinea, Zambia and Namibia. 
The Taifa stars who are returning to the Chan competition after an 11-year absence are looking to better their performance in Cameroon. Wilkista Nyabwa has more. Tanzania will make their second appearance at the 2020 African Nations Championship in Cameroon, where the Taifa stars are hoping to do better than their 2009 showing, where they crushed out at the group stages. Tanzania booked a sport after beating neighbors Kenya and Sudan. After last week's draw, Tanzania has found itself in a rather favorable Group D alongside Guinea, Namibia and Zambia. This has increased belief among their fans that they can improve on their previous showing. Tanzania is the underdog because of our ranking. They are nations we can manage. The FIFA rankings are based on an assessment of teams that include players who play abroad. It's another opportunity to make sure we do well and rise in the FIFA and Africa rankings. We have players who can change the results at any time. If the coach presents a philosophy of observing our team as well as other teams that we'll be competing against in the group stage, then we can do something good. However, some supporters have not been easily sold on to the idea that the Taifa stars will have an easy ride in Cameroon. We are happy that Tanzania has qualified, but our players have to increase their efforts in order to compete with teams such as Namibia and Zambia. Not that they are as good as teams such as Cameroon and Ghana, but as compared to Tanzania, we still lag behind. Tanzanian football is a buzz following the recent groundbreaking move of its star striker Mbwana Samata to English Premier League side Aston Villa. A strong showing in Cameroon by local Taifa Stars heroes is what the country needs to keep the momentum as a football mad country seeks to be a continental force. Well, staying in the region, East African football giants Uganda will be making a fifth successive appearance at the CAF African Nations Championship when the competition kicks off this April in Cameroon. Supporters of the Uganda Cranes believe the team can finally progress to the group stage, having already been drawn together with neighbors Rwanda, champions Morocco, and debutants Togo. CGTN's Leon Senyange reports from Kampala. Uganda was placed in Group C alongside the defending champions Morocco, Rwanda and debutants Togo. And head coach Johnny McInstree is already sounding positive following the draw earlier this week. The tournament exclusively features players from each of the country's football leagues. And with McInstree's confidence going into the competition is the heightened expectation from football fans here as well. We spoke to Sam and this is what they had to say. Morocco is a top team, it's the defending champion. Two, Togo is also a top team. This is our fifth time to go to Chan, but we have not been getting out of that group. So this time I don't think whether we are going out of that group. I don't think so. Chan is a tournament where you gauge the strength of your league. And our league is not that professional, has not reached the, the level of Morocco, the Moroccan league or uh, Rwanda, we might say we are better than them because even the Sekafa region we can rank higher than them. But I think it's going to be really challenging and I, I, I personally, I don't think we can do much. What might worry me is on preparation. How well are these teams preparing as opposed to ours? In recent years, we have improved even there because the Federation has a few more resources now to prepare teams for international duty than it used to. Uganda has never gone past the group stages in their four previous participations. The Cranes will kick off against Rwanda, a side McIntyre guided to the quarterfinals in 2016. Uganda will play their final game against Morocco. Leon Sanyange, CGTN, Kampala, Uganda. Well, as mentioned earlier, Rwanda has been pooled with regional rivals Uganda in a contest that has a little extra spice to it thanks to the year-long tensions that are only now cooling between the two East African neighbors. Also in Group C are title holders Morocco and debutants Togo. Mohamed Abubakar now reports from Kigali. Rwanda's national football team has already started its training camp ahead of the upcoming 2020 African Nations Championship set to be hosted in Cameroon this April. Earlier this week, Amavubi learned of their fate in the group phase of the competition after being pulled in Pool C alongside neighbors Uganda, 
Togo and defending champions Morocco. We respect our opponents. Morocco is uh, the defending champions now. Yeah, so we expect a very tough game against uh, the, the, the North Africans. Uganda as well, our neighbors. Uh, we, we've always been uh, playing tough games with Uganda, so I think it's going to be another big game as well with Uganda. And uh, also Togo, not much information about them, but we also know Togo is a very a good footballing nation in Africa, so we expect that uh, all the three teams are going to be very tough for us, but uh, our boys are very well organized. We've been to Chan before. We are ready for for this new chapter again, and I hope uh, the experience we've had uh, from the previous tournaments, I think they're going to push us all the way. Rwanda will kick off their campaign against regional rivals Uganda in Douala, a match that has already got fans here excited. Morichani. Having Uganda in the same group is a big deal. They are our neighbors, and I know there will be fierce competition. You can already see the Ugandan coach starting mind games. We know Uganda are a strong team, but all we have to do is focus on preparing well. We do not fear Uganda. That will be a really great match, a tough one for sure, because Uganda are a really strong team. But I am also confident with our national team. We have great local players here. We will give them a tough game, and it will be a great match to watch. The team is set to play two friendly matches this coming week, one against Cameroon on the 24th of February in Yaoundé, and the other against Congo Brazzaville on the 28th in Kigali. Amavubi has only gone past the group stage once, and that was when the country hosted the competition back in 2016. However, the team hope that the consistency in appearances in this competition will count for enough experience to help them progress further this time round. Mohamed Abubakar for CGTN, Kigali, Rwanda. Well, let's get more on this now from Kigali, where our correspondent Mohamed Abubakar joins us for more on the Chan 2020 draw. Mohamed, one of the most exciting matchups uh, from the draw is that East African derby between uh, Uganda and Rwanda in Group C. What does a meeting between the Cranes and the Amavubi stars mean to fans of both sides and the region as a whole? Thank you so much, Mahia. Indeed, uh, this uh, draw and this tie in particular is huge and uh, important, significant for many reasons, of course, politically. The leaders of these two nations decided to put the differences aside and uh, begin talks to normalize uh, uh, their relations. Uh, and this uh, uh, match, or rather this tie, the opening tie of uh, Group C between Amavubi uh, and Uganda will be more of a litmus test to see how uh, the, these two nations uh, uh, start or rather uh, coexist now. And uh, it has proven uh, in so many occasions that sporting events such as football uh, matches have, have very powerful in bringing uh, people together, nations, together. Uh, in terms of uh, the sports aspect of it, it's uh, promising to be an enticing match. Excitement uh, between uh, f from fans here uh, in Rwanda, you can tell they are confident. They, this, is a, this is a regional derby and in derbies, you know, teams uh, bring out the best in them and they are confident that they can actually uh, get these three points uh, against Uganda. They are saying that the only team they fear in this group is Morocco, of course, because they are the defending champions. Mahia. And of course, uh, traditional giants, Mohammed, like Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt and Tunisia, uh, will be missing from the tournament. Is this now an indication that they are maybe not taking the tournament seriously or is it, is it a sign of their uh, failing domestic football? Indeed, this is a huge debate between fans uh, across uh, the continent. Uh, this is a competition that is uh, made for the local players in the home countries. And uh, if you look at the teams that have won this competition, three come from Northern Africa, no Northern African countries, which have set up really good leagues. They, uh, the structures there of uh, trying to bring up uh, good players is very strong, well organized. And of course, uh, you can also look at it in the other way. Uh, some of the nations that do not have uh, a stronger leagues, look at this as an opportunity for them to market themselves to for them to create a name and and be sported and scouted so uh, that is evident again because uh, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo are two-time uh, winners of this competition the most decorated in this competition and they don't have the strongest off league so it can be looked in both ways Mahia and uh, finally of course Morocco are the title holders but there has not been a repeat winner in the Chan tournament uh, will we have a new champion and if so who are the likely candidates 
Well, it's a tough one, uh, but uh, looking at the facts here, uh, the Northern African nations, uh, you can never rule them, out, uh, rule them out, and rightly so. They are always uh, favorites going into these competitions. Uh, this is the sixth edition and the five uh, editions before. Uh, three of them have been won by North African uh, nations, Morocco, Tunisia, and Libya. Uh, and the other two have uh, been won by the Democratic Republic of Congo as well. But uh, we have to talk about Cameroon as well. This is a nation that is hosting it. They've put so much resources uh, into this competition so they will be they will be counted as favorite as well and these players from Cameroon will be eyeing the the African Cup of Nations next year which will still be hosted in Cameroon and uh, as as, uh, as history proves again uh, in the last five uh, finals of uh, this particular competition there has never missed uh, a West African team except for 2011 so you cannot uh, rule out West African teams as well Mahia all right, plenty to look forward to, Mohamed, at this year's Chan Tournament. Mohamed Abubakar joining us live there from the Rwandan capital, Kigali. Well, it's time for us to take a short break here on Sports Scene. Here's what's coming up. Uganda netball star Ruth Mehmet takes center stage in this month's Sportlight interview. How will your world change today? What happens here? What happens there? Or what you make happen for yourself? If it matters to you, it matters to us too. Your stories are the stories that need to be told. Africa Live. Find your voice. And now, time for the Sportlight interview. So this afternoon here on CGT and Spotlight, I'm more than pleased to welcome to the program Ruth Meme, who is a player with the Uganda netball team. Ruth, thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'll just begin by asking you about, to tell us about your personal journey into netball, uh, where it began to where you are now. Netball has been played in Uganda for a long time. Even before I used to know it, they had already gone to the World Cup. So as time went on I used to hear their names and I was like one day I need to reach their limits their height there uh, next to our home there is um, a pitch whereby some old ladies used to train from there and I used to admire them uh, like what they were doing and in my primary school they had a netball team but I didn't know how to do it though I, I used to admire the sport and one day when they called up new entrants in the team, what I used to see these ladies do at the pitch is what I really put up at the trials in the primary school. So the, the trainer picked me up, said, yes, you have the skill, and that's how I started playing. And how did you enjoy being on the international stage? It's a big opportunity, but so challenging. Sometimes the crowd is very big, you're not used to it and you're meeting new people who have new skills, uh, different umpiring skills. At first, it was so confusing that most of the things that they used to call on us were, were really confusing us until we got back on board. And then we were sensitized about that umpiring. And then we got into the system, which really made us shine again, get there, not feeling demoralized, not feeling like leaving the sport because we are not at the same level, but just pushed us, uh, pushed us up and made us really feel we, we are deserving to be where we are. Ruth, you, you get to play alongside uh, netball greats in Uganda like Peace Proskovia. What's it like to be in the same squad with, with a, a player like her, like her? It is really so inspiring because she came from nothing and now she's somewhere. Also us, where we are, we believe as time goes on, even if it's not me, but also some other young generations, they'll get there. 
and we, should, we shall all feel proud, so honored, because we'll be having more people going out there to be like this. So it motivates our playing skills. It motivates us more and more to work hard every day, every time, because we need to get where peace is right now. Now, according to the latest rankings, Uganda currently sits in sixth position in the world. Tell us about what that means to you. Is it uh, an issue of personal pride, or is it a goal that you'd like to go on and break? It's really a great achievement because we came from a no-ranked nation. Yet we used to play active netball every time in different tournaments and more so being into the African championships most of the years that I became very active on the national team. But we never used to be ranked anywhere. But getting to that level, being in the sixth position, it's a great achievement, but we need to exceed it more and get lower because we need to put uh, East African community somewhere to get to know. And finally, what would you like to see in the future of your career in netball? I'd like to see mainly my country maintaining and also getting at a higher rank. Maybe into the, the, the semi-final bracket whereby I will hear the netball team will never go down because it came from far and where it has reached I would not like to see in the future that it's over or it has gone back to where we got it from from where it started from the hassles to get back again on the world scene I would like to see the netball that is very active having young leaders having uh, people who have been in the sport uh, to 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 sensitize young ones, to show them the good things they've got. So this is why I want to see netball. Even when the, these ones that are coming from primary, secondary, they will learn, they will pick a leaf. What did Meme achieve? Where is she? What did she become? And they will really enjoy the sport, not only watching the bad side of it, but also the good side of it. More so seeing the active players that have been in, entering into administration, uh, coaching, umpiring, because they've seen it, they've played it, they've watched it, and they need to show it to the, to the young ones. Ruth Meme, thank you very much for speaking to us on CGTN. And still to come here on Sports Scene. The Zamalek party rolls on after Egyptian Super Cup win over bitter rivals Al Ahli. The Zamalek party rolled on this week after they edged fellow Cairo Giants and arc rivals Al Ahli to lift the Egyptian Super Cup in Abu Dhabi. The victory came hot on the heels of their stirring CAF Super Cup triumph over Esperance de Tunis a week ago in Dubai. Fans of the White Knights have not witnessed such successive title wins in nearly two decades, as CGTN's Adel Makhroui now reports. The Egyptian derby between Al Ahli and Zamalek is usually an exciting football event. This year, however, it's being played beyond the Egyptian borders, which means that most fans here in Egypt can only follow it on TV. With no stadiums to cheer for the two teams who were playing in the UAE, this is the closest it could get for a match spirit. Al Ahli has been by far dominating the Egyptian Premier League. The Super Cup match, though, saw a much stronger Zamalek. Al Ali is technically stronger. They're almost guaranteed the Egyptian Premier League this season, halfway through. But it's not the team that we're used to seeing. They're doing well because the rest of the teams are not too strong. I did not expect Cateroon to succeed in pressing their offense that way. That is not Al Ali that we know. 
Winning the CAF Super Cup came just days ahead of this encounter. Apparently, it has given Zamalek a massive boost. Al Ahli made more opportunities, but the White Knights made them fail in translating these attempts into goals. Forced into penalty kicks, the main time declared the two equals. But the Egyptian Super Cup chose Zamalek. We are a team of titles. Zamalek is not a small team. Any competition we enter, the players play with high spirit. I was expecting the victory. Zamalek is much stronger now. And even if they had lost, I would still support them with passion. For Zamalek to stand strong on their feet after a few days from the CAF Super Cup victory, they are true men. Players have honored us. Zamalek have excellent players. All they need is to gain confidence. They've played two finals in one week and won them both. I think that's a great boost for the team. This is the fourth Egyptian Super Cup title for Zamalek. For their coach Patrice Cartiran, the joy of winning the title is priceless. Al Ahli have sacked him just a few months back. Another derby is scheduled this Monday. Egypt's top two teams will finally clash for their postponed feature in the Egyptian Premier League. Adel Mahroui, CGTN, Cairo. Finally, off to the course where an eight year old prodigy from South Africa, Sim Tandile Sim Tiger Shabalala, is living his dream of becoming the next Tiger Woods. The young golfing sensation jets around the world as he continues to hone his craft while shining in local and international tournaments. Yuli Sanjamela has more. He's only eight years old, but he's turning heads everywhere as he rises up the golf rankings. South Africa's young golf sensation Simtandile Simtaga Chavalala has been creating a stir as he travels the world, gaining experience and finishing up the leaderboards wherever he goes. So when we met him, we first asked the young prodigy, what would you tell anyone interested in knowing you or about you? Well, I would have to tell them that, um, have you, do you know this person, this wonderful golfer, plays golf around the world and, um, it's on Twitter, and I don't know, also can search on YouTube. The young lad is quite pleased with his achievements thus far. I feel um, very honored and very proud of myself because I wouldn't be here if I was not playing golf this well. And thanks for my family and God for everything, and um, I'm just thankful and honored to be here. His proud father also doubles up as his caddy. We are very, very proud of this young man. I mean, we've come uh, far, and for him to achieve what, uh, what he's achieved at this young age, uh, it's very um, fulfilling. And as parents, my wife and I are very proud of this young boy. We asked Sim Tiger's father how he knew that his son loved golf. The goal was to expose him to different sports until I find out what his talent is. So when I was two, we took him for professional lessons on tennis, on soccer, cricket, swimming. And then uh, when he was four, then we did um, golf, but then I didn't know anything about golf. So what we did, um, we had to go to on YouTube to check how golf is played. And then I would teach him from, from the age of, of, of four. Sim Tiger had an opportunity of playing with the country's number one citizen this weekend. President Cyril Ramaphosa. But we could not let Sim Tiger go away without being challenged by these journalists, right? Well, I tried. And won something. Sim Tiger Chabalala has only been professionally trained for the past few years, but he's already won more than 20 trophies and is sure to win many more. Yuli Sanjomela for CGTN in Cape Town, South Africa. And that's it for Sports Scene. Remember, you can send your feedback to the contacts on your screen and follow us on our digital media platforms. I'm Mahe Mutua. Thanks for watching.